Alright guys, today we have some dampers to have a look at. RC Mart sent us these to have a look at. They're from Yeah Racing. DSG-0050BU. Nice. <laughs> They're 50mm, so will fit lots of different cars, including the TT01, if you're not looking for a suspension lift. There's a couple of other lengths available too. You may be wondering why I'm showing you an empty box. Well... That's because the dampers have already been built for our article over at rcmojo.com. If you want some high-res pictures, you'll want to have a poke around on there. The fourth damper has been stripped down so we can have a look at how it all goes together. Anyway, on the side of the box are some diagrams of the damper pistons. Now, you get the usual two, three and four hole pistons, but you also get a set with tapered holes. The idea being, the damping is different on compression and rebound. Something to experiment with if you like tweaking your setup. On the other side are some bullet points. CNC machined, titanium coated damper shafts. Selected anti-leak o-ring. Unique piston design. Rebound core system. Aluminium damper cylinder. Easy to refill damper oil. Simple installation. I think the last two were added to get the spacing right for the text. Anyway, on the back is a nice cutaway of one of the dampers, which also shows the only real downside. While the quality of the O-rings are pretty good, there's only one of them. A lot of the other manufacturers use two, which makes the shaft more stable and helps greatly stopping leaks. However, you never know until they've seen some use, so we'll see. Right, this is what you get in the box. A large amount of pistons to play with. Two, three and four holes, straight and tapered. Four ball nuts. Eight ball ends, all with an M3 thread. Lots of transparent O-rings, which will disappear as soon as I move my hand. Five sets of springs at various rates. The other three soft ones are on the built-up dampers. A small bottle of 300 CST oil, which is somewhere near 30 weight, I reckon. There's a set of four shot bodies, shafts, large O-rings, bladders, urethane bushes, and various plastic parts. Altogether, quite an impressive array of bits to play with, especially for the money. Okay, let's put one of them together. Start with the body and unscrew the top and the bottom caps and the collar. For each damper you will also need, and these are the names from the instructions, shock head, urethane bushing, oil seal, selected anti-slip o-ring, selected anti-leak o-ring, spacer, rod guide, two e-rings, a piston of your choice, we're using a three hole, shock shaft, shock end. You'll also need a spring cup and a spring. Grab the shaft and pop in one of the E-clips, sorry, E-rings, into the lower slot. You can do this operation with the shaft in a bag if you're worried about losing one, as the kit doesn't come with any spares. Slot in whichever piston you're going to be using, make sure it's all the way down, and pop in another E-ring into the end slot. <laughs> Slide the shaft through the damper body and apply some of the silicon oil to lube up the shaft and the threads. Slide one of the O-rings on. Next insert the spacer. It's not the same on both sides. One side is shaped to fit the O-ring, the other side is flat. Make sure you get it round the right way. Next, pop in the rod guide. The flat side goes against the spacer. Grab the bottom cap and screw it on. Do it up until it bottoms out, as tight as you can do it by hand is all it needs. Tear off a strip of cardboard and wrap it around the shaft leaving the threads exposed, and grab it with a pair of pliers. You need the card so you don't damage the surface of the shaft. When you have a good grip, thread on one of the shock ends. That's the bottom end done, so now you can fill it with oil. With the piston at the bottom of the body, fill it to just below the top with the silicon oil. Now slowly move the shaft up and down to get the air that's trapped under the piston. For the best setup, leave it stood up for an hour or so to let the air rise to the top. When the bubbles have gone, top up the oil. When you're happy with the fluid level, pop one of the oil seals on the top with the dome down into the oil. 
If you get a bit of oil spillage over the edge, don't worry, just keep going and clean it up when the cap's on. Drop one of the urethane bushes in, making sure it's somewhere near the middle, then fit the cap with the shock head inside. Just like the bottom end, do it up by hand. If you had a bit of a spill, now is a good time to clean it up. Nearly there now, take the cylinder nut and install the selected anti-slip o-ring. It just pops into a slot inside. Thread it on most of the way up the damper body. Install a spring. We're using the red dots, the softest ones. Compress the spring and insert the spring cup. Adjust the cylinder nut to take up the slack and that's about it. Do that three more times and you'll have a nice shiny set of dampers. Okay, fitting. We're going to fit them to this TT01D. It should be pretty much the same for straight TT01s, TT01 Type E's and will be fairly similar on the TT02. For other cars you might have to use your imagination a bit, but it will never be all that complex. Right, we will start by taking the stock dampers off. They have an open ball end at the top and at the bottom, so they just pop off. The TT01D comes with oil dampers, so these will be going in a bag to use on something else later. The new damper might fit the Tamiya balls, but there's no guarantee. They might be a bit tight or a bit loose. So resist the urge to take a shortcut and unscrew them all. If you keep the stock dampers, keep them together. I'm using the inner hole on the lower arms as it gives a little more ground clearance than the outer. That makes all the difference if you run outside. Pop the new dampers over the ball ends. You might need some pliers for the top balls as the plastic is fairly stiff. The lower ones are easy enough to do by hand. On the rear, you may find the top balls are ball nuts. If so, keep track of the plastic spacers as you don't want to lose them. Other than that, the rear goes together just the same as on the front. Lower ball ends on the inner holes, pop the dampers on, and we're good to go. That's about it then. Other than the lower seal being a single o-ring, and the shaft being able to wobble, these look to be great value dampers. As long as they don't start leaking, I would suggest anyone looking to upgrade their car from plastic dampers, or even friction shocks, to consider these. I need to change the TTA1D over to 2.5 gigs and give it a few runs to see how the seals hold up. Assuming they do though, I'll give them 4 out of 5 stars. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thanks for watching, as always. A like is always appreciated. If you haven't already, you can subscribe so you know when we upload something new. And don't forget, there's some nice pics of the dampers over at rcmojo.com. Thanks guys.